In today's video we look at what happens to the body when we exercise. These are the short term effects of exercise on the body. In this video, we investigate the different ways in which the body adapts to exercise. This is broken down into short-term and long-term effects. Short-term refers to an individual training session, whilst the long-term comprises of months or years of training. In this video, we're going to look at the short-term effects of exercise. So, starting with the short-term effects of exercise on the musculoskeletal system. The musculoskeletal system is made up of the skeletal and muscular systems and this is used to describe the interaction between muscles and bones. There are five main short-term effects on the musculoskeletal system. First one is an increased production of synovial fluid. This is when more synovial fluid is released into the joint to provide lubrication and greater protection. Also, when there is increased temperature and blood flow within the body, there's an increased range of motion in the joints. By improving the flexibility of the body, this will help to reduce the risk of injuries. Micro tears in muscle fibers. When you exercise or lift weights, this causes small tears within the muscle and this leads to the muscle being repaired bigger and stronger. New bone formation. To summarize, when stress is put on the body, such as lifting weights or performing in certain sports, the body will produce collagen which therefore strengthens bones. Increased metabolic activity. Exercise requires energy and through metabolic activity the food you consume is turned into usable energy. When you exercise you increase your metabolic activity and need to consume more food to cover these energy requirements. Moving on to the short term effects of exercise on the cardiorespiratory system. The cardiorespiratory system is comprised of the cardiovascular and respiratory systems, basically the heart and lungs. Right then, off to the gym. So today I'm down at the gym doing a short session to demonstrate what happens to the cardiorespiratory system when we exercise. So there's a couple of things I'm going to be looking at today. First thing is the heart rate and blood flow. I can do that by taking my pulse and working out my beats per minute. Next thing is going to be breathing rate, so how many breaths I take in a minute as well. Again, I'm going to do a comparison before and after exercise. And the last thing I'm going to be looking at is uh, sweat production and skin reddening. So this is my before photo at the moment, not sweating, I'm not all red. Let's see what I look like after the session. So my pulse came out at 70 beats per minute at rest. So in one minute my chest rose 25 times. So 25 breaths per minute. So just finished a good half hour on the running machine, sweating. Heart rate's coming out at around about 155, 160. I'm just gonna go measure my breathing rate. Okay, so just finished a big cardio session there. Uh, got a nice sweat on, if you can see the sweat. Um, again, I'll explain why, does, why do we sweat when we exercise? What's the point of it? Why does it happen? That's one of the effects of when we train. Um, and again, there's a reason for that. Right, heart rate was coming out around about 155, 160. Okay, so that was an elevated heart rate because I was doing exercise. Breathing rate, let's measure it now for one minute. 
Okay, that was coming out to about, about 38, 40 breaths per minute. Okay, so I get an increase of my breathing rate, taking in more oxygen to get that oxygen to the muscles. Increased heart rate and blood flow. Blood transports oxygen and nutrients to the muscles, as well as removing waste products from the blood. And when exercising, there is a greater demand for all of these. So when we exercise, we get an increased breathing rate, and this is so more oxygen can be supplied to the muscles. Sweat production and skin reddening. When you exercise, you produce heat so your body starts to sweat to regulate temperature. Also, your skin goes red as the blood vessels in the skin dilates to allow heat to escape. This is called vasodilation. Redistribution of blood flow. When exercising, the body diverts where the blood is distributed to. Blood is mainly sent to the skeletal muscles instead of areas such as the brain, the stomach and the skin. Lactic acid in the blood. Lactic acid forms when you're performing anaerobically. When you perform at a high intensity, your body can't produce energy using oxygen and uses carbohydrates as an energy source. When this happens, lactic acid is produced as a byproduct and a protection mechanism. The only way to remove lactic acid from the body is to rest. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped per minute by the heart. Cardiac output is the combination of your heart rate plus your stroke volume, which is the amount of blood pumped by the heart in one beat. Blood pressure. This is the product of your cardiac output and the resistance to the blood flow within the blood vessel. So when exercising, there is higher blood pressure. Increased tidal volume. When we exercise, we increase our breathing rate. Tidal volume also increases, which is the amount of air inhaled and exhaled within each breath. So we take in more oxygen whilst removing more carbon dioxide at a faster rate when exercising. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch the next video which looks at the long-term responses to exercise.